Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our morning worship service here at Greece Baptist Church in sunny Rochester, New York. It is so good to have each and every one of you here with us. Uh, this morning is Sunday, the 18th of September. This is Back to Church Sunday. And immediately following our worship service this morning, we invite everybody down to Dean Hall for a picnic lunch of barbecue and corn on the cob and a visit from the Lugia's ice cream truck. And it's all you can eat at the ice cream truck, I believe, if I have the instructions correct. So thank you for coming, and we're glad that you're here. Our theme verse this morning comes from the Sermon on the Mount, in which Jesus uses the image of us being the light of the world to remind us of the role we have in brightening up the lives of those around us, and by doing so, glorifying God. Our musical guest this morning is our friend Perry Cleveland. With Perry's help, Leslie and I are going to offer a sermon in song this morning, something a little different, encouraging us all to make a difference by shining the light of the world on everyone around us. And we're going to begin this morning with our prelude with a song called, I Give Thanks.
as we come, come together, together now. Don't ever doubt that one small group can change the world. Don't ever doubt that one small group can change the world. Don't ever doubt that one small group can change the world. It always has. It always has. It always will. Thank you. Our first hymn this morning is going to be number 108 in your gray hymnals, Come Christians, Join to Sing. Members of our GBC Orchestra are going to play the hymns for us this morning. You can follow along with the lyrics either in the hymn books in front of you or in the monitor over my head right now. We're going to stand, if you are able, and sing together all three verses of number 108, Come Christians, Join to Sing. Please join me in the call to worship. It is good to be together, God, in this, in this place, with, with these people at this time, together listening for your voice. In this hour of worship, tell us about your kingdom of kindness so that we may seek it. Show us your justice. We want, we want to, to walk, walk with you, you humbly, closely, daily. daily. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, and our first reading this morning is Psalm 113, the first eight verses. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is seated on high? Who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap and make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. Thank you, Ed and Marjorie. Our next hymn is number 20 in the hymnal. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. So if you would stand in body, mind, or spirit and join us, we're going to sing all three verses. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
Book of Common Prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land, of all the nations, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in, in your, your mercy, mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy. hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, Lord, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, Lord in, in your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our next scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 5. From what we know is the Sermon on the Mount, it's verses 13 and 16 where Jesus says this, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This morning, we're going to take just a few minutes and ask everyone to think about this question. The question is, how has dealing with COVID pandemic over the last couple years affected your spirituality? If you're comfortable, I'm going to invite people to turn to the person or persons nearest you and chat about this for just a moment. If you're not comfortable talking about it, just say hi, how you doing? Nice to see you. Um, and just say hello. That's fine. Those of you who are home on the Zoom, uh, Talk about this amongst yourselves with whoever you're watching together with. And then in just a couple moments, we'll get everybody back with their attention up here in the front. So how has dealing with the COVID pandemic affected your spirituality? What if we were known more for what we love instead of what we hate? Would that make a difference? What if we spent more time loving people and less time being angry with them? 
would that make a difference? What if we gave unconditionally of our time, our talent, our treasures? Would that make a difference? What if we shared the difference Jesus has made in our lives and stopped pushing away those who aren't there yet? Would that make a difference? What if we walked in the steps of our Savior, sitting with the broken, caring for the poor, loving the lost? Would that make a difference? We live in the midst of ruins, surrounded by brokenness, pain, and loss. It's a moment made for us, a calling we were created to answer, not with judgment, not with harsh words, or self-righteousness, but with love, the love of Jesus. What if the church acted like the church? Would that make a difference? Would it make a difference? It sure would. It would make all the difference in the world. For us to be the light of the world that Jesus calls us to be, we need to shine that light of love on everyone we see. And that begins with ourselves. We all need to realize, each one of us needs to realize, that each one of us is a uniquely wonderful part of God's amazing creation. Listen, I need to talk to you. I know this might sound strange. You'll probably think I'm crazy. I've lost my mind. I'm amazing. I'm incredible. I'm a miracle, a dream come true. I'm marvelous. I am beautiful. Guess what? So are you. I can see it's becoming clear. I can feel it down in my soul. I know that I am you and you are me. For the simple things we take for granted every day. I can walk, I can talk, I can use my mind. I'm amazing, I'm incredible, I'm a miracle, a dream come true. I'm marvelous, I am beautiful, guess what? So are you. That don't mean we're better than anyone or anything. It's a call to come together and accept responsibility and be amazing, be incredible. You're a miracle, a dream come true. And I'm marvelous, I am beautiful. Guess what? So are you. Guess what? So are you. Guess what? So are you. So the next step for us in shining that light of God's love is to recognize that same beautiful, amazing uniqueness in every one of God's other creatures. 
regardless of the color of their skin or the language that they speak or the nation they come from or the religion that they practice. And that's what this next song is all about. With our eyes open to the beauty inside each of us and inside each other, the next thing we need to do is open up our hearts to the power of love that binds us together. Uh, Leslie was 
Uh, I'm not sure where she found this, somewhere on the internet, and she passed this on to me, and I thought I'd share it with you this morning. A little short piece written by a guy named Justin Fairman. He says, I see so many people talking about the world's problems, but so few talking about the solution to them, love. It really is that simple, despite how complicated we often try to make it. Pretty hard to keep a war going when people are focused on love. Pretty hard to have an economic crisis when people are cooperating together in love. Pretty hard to have supply chain issues and destroy the environment when people are engaging the earth with love. And then some say, but there are many who would laugh at this idea, who would ridicule it, even fight it. And I say to you, I have never heard a convincing argument against love. And I've never dreamed of a compelling future which does not include it. And anyone I've ever met who has lived without love is in pain and suffering. And then there are others still who say this is high-minded idealism. And the reality is we could never get everyone on board. And I say to them that humanity has never accomplished anything of value unless high-minded idealism had been at play. And that history is filled with examples of small groups of idealistic, inspired people changing the world. And further still, I say that love in human form is not a perfect state of being. It's a choice that you make over and over again. It is a commitment to a principle that you return to, despite your inevitable deviations from it. It is a standard that you hold for all your decisions, all your choices, all your relationships, that you measure them by. And then you do your best to uphold, even in the face of great pain, that you return to when you are lost. This is love. And you will know when you have found it by the way it feels. Ultimately, this is humanity's only problem, that we've become disconnected from this feeling of love. All other issues find their roots here. And it is thus our only true need to return to love. There's a lot to be lost in the great wide world. Don't walk away from love It might not look like you planned Your family might not understand Don't walk away from love Cause we move around the wheel Up and down how we feel Don't walk away from love We are darkness, we are light We don't always get it right don't walk away from love. Life is often a mess, sometimes more, sometimes less. Don't walk away from love. And of course there will be fears and problems through the years. Don't walk away from love. And when you have found it, work everything around it don't walk away from love any fortune can waver do yourself a favor don't walk away from love all the ways we get sick all the ways we get poor don't walk away from love all the little tiny pieces we don't know what they're for don't walk away from love because there are things you can't imagine waiting in store don't walk away from love it's a boat across the river 
to a shining shore, an open hand, an open door. Let go your heart just a little bit more. Don't walk away from love. Don't walk away from love. Don't walk away from love. So love God, love yourself, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's what Jesus told us to do. Some Christians put all their focus on loving God, or maybe on loving God and themselves, but don't quite get around to those annoying neighbors. But according to the Bible, we can't say that we love God who no one has ever seen if we don't love our neighbors who we see every day. And if we say that, the Bible says, we're liars. Because loving our neighbor is the way that we show our love for God. So let's make that our goal, to show our neighbors how much we love God through the way we demonstrate our love toward them. If we do that, we will be the light of the world. And we most definitely will make a difference. You don't love God if you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets into trouble, and you don't try to help him, then you don't love your neighbor, and you don't love God. There are many people who will say they're Christians and they live like Christians on the Sabbath day. But come Monday morning till the coming Sunday, they will fight their neighbor all along the way. You don't love God if, if you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets into trouble, and you don't try to help him, then you don't love your neighbor, and you don't love God. Just in case you think we're making this all up as we go along. The Holy Bible in the book of Matthew, read the 18th chapter from the 21st verse. Jesus plainly tells us that we must have mercy. There's a special warning in the 35th verse. But you don't love God if you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets into trouble, and you don't try to help him, then you don't love your neighbor, and you don't love God. There's a God Almighty, and you've got to love him if you want salvation and a home on high. If you say you love him while you hate your neighbor, you don't have religion, you just told a lie. Cause you don't love God. If you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets into trouble and you don't try to help him, then you don't love your neighbor and you don't love God. Then you don't love your neighbor and you don't love God. Well, thank you so much, Leslie and Steve and Perry. That was really, really awesome. Thank you so much. It was great. Um, please join me in our prayers of the people today. Oh, gracious God, we thank you so much that you provide generously for all our needs. We want to serve you and not allow money, possessions, or power to become idols. Help us overcome the temptations of greed and selfishness. May, be, may we be content with your provision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the church. Give them wisdom as they study, preach, and counsel. May they faithfully communicate your word. Lord, in your mercy. We lift to you those who have been killed, injured, or traumatized because of human violence. 
especially in Ukraine, Afghanistan, and our own city of Rochester and our own county. Wipe away every tear from their eyes. We pray for an end to the violence and for an enduring peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to be faithful in the least so we can be trusted with much. Guide us in our outreach. Give us an awareness of the needs in our communities. Direct us in the ways you want us to invest our resources of time, talent, and money. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We know, Lord, that you love and care for those who are suffering from illness, violence, and persecution. We pray for protection, comfort, and healing for those on our prayer list and those who we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enliven the church with your Holy Spirit so we may be instruments of your peace and love in a troubled world. Use us and all believers and people of every faith as your ambassadors to our families, colleagues, and neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So our instrumentalists are going to come back, and we're going to do our final hymn this morning, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It is number 45 in your gray hymnals. After we do the final hymn, I'm going to pronounce the benediction. And for those of you who may be visiting today, so you know what to expect, after the benediction, we do some announcements and we have a time of joys and concerns where people can express concerns they have. And as soon as that's over, we're all going down that hallway, uh, down to Dean Hall where the food's gonna be laid out. And we hope, uh, we hope you'll stay and, and enjoy a picnic lunch with us for our Back to Church Sunday. But now if you'll turn to number 45, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Now may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you now and forever. Amen. I got two hands, gonna clap my hands together. Got two legs, gonna dance to heaven's door. And I got one heart, gonna fill it up with Jesus. And I ain't gonna think about trouble anymore. Well, this old world, sometimes it does get lonesome. And many a grown man has hung his head and cried, Oh, but down in your soul, there's one who won't desert you. Ain't it fine to have the Savior by your side? I got two hands, gonna clap my hands together. Got two legs, gonna dance to heaven's door. And I got one heart, gonna fill it up with Jesus. And I ain't gonna think about trouble anymore. Now the Lord resides inside a house of glory. And faith is the door, and love is the key. Oh, and warm is the light. Pouring from those mighty windows That light, my friends, it shines for you and me I got two hands, gonna clap my hands together Got two legs, gonna dance to heaven's door I got one heart, gonna fill it up with Jesus And I ain't gonna think about trouble anymore Two hands, I'm gonna clap my hands together. Got two legs, I'm gonna dance to heaven's door. And I got one heart, I'm gonna fill it up with Jesus. And I ain't gonna think about trouble anymore. When the wind blows on that fateful morning, and I close my eyes, fly my body home, I don't want my friends cry no tears about me I'll be bathing in the glory of the throne I got two hands gonna clap my hands together got two legs gonna dance to heaven's door and I got one heart and I fill it up with Jesus and I ain't gonna think about trouble ain't gonna think about trouble ain't gonna think about trouble anymore